Hey, this is Sebastian Maniscalco. What's happening? It's your man, Makai Pfeiffer. Hey, everyone. I'm Olivia Munn, and you're watching Covino and Rich. Turn on to Covino and Rich. I'm here with Covino and Rich. Unbelievable Muscanias. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I, w I wonder if he remembers. I think he remembers. He should. He's in the movie. I, I would imagine he knows. There he is. Hey, hey how are you? There What's going is. on, man? We'll figure it out. Pleasure. We'll figure Rich. it out. Nice, nice to meet you. How are you? The star of Scandal, Joe Morton, here oh, on the Covino and Rich. How you doing? Joe, nice to meet you. Have a seat, man. Thank you. I hate to put you on the spot, but Rich and I were just fighting about this yesterday and talking about it now. You've done, what, over 70 films? Something like that, okay. yes. Okay, well, I mentioned there's a particular actor who's big in the barrio, right? He's big in the barrio, <laughs> and I'm going to show you his face, and you might remember him. Do you know this guy? Uh, yes, I do. You do? Carlos Carrasco, who played, do you remember the name of his character in your very famous movie, Speed? Uh, I don't know. See, right? I didn't remember you. Yeah. yeah, but what's great is he's in the movie. I mean, it's just fun to see if they remember. Oh, yes, of course. He played the bus driver. Gigantor. Yeah. Was it Gig oh, he, was, uh, he was on the bus. He was, yeah. on, he was on the bus. Gigantor. 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 Right. But he's also in a very famous movie called Blood In, Blood Out as a character named Popeye. And uh, a lot of the Vatos Locos remember this guy. <laughs> That's so funny. And he came up in conversation, which was saying, nobody knows him. I'm like, dude, he's in speed with Joe. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't recognize that guy. Yeah. But Joe no, Martin I do. is here. Uh, let me tell you, scandal. I, I love this show. I, I every, every time I'm like, where are they going to go next? Because now on the show... You know, Fitz is on his way out of the White House. Yes. And you're wondering, like, where could the show go? And now there's all these new angles. And I'm like, holy shit, how do they... This is this show's on point, huh? Well, they do it because we have somebody called Shonda Rhimes who sort of leads the charge. Is she that unbelievable? She because, is, I mean, absolutely. between all the all those shows, Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, No Relation Scandal, to Busta. No, rela no relation to Busta Rhymes. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, no, no relation whatsoever. Right. Not that I know of, anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Shonda Rhimes, really the real deal, huh? She's just a genius? She is amazing. And then we, we have a room full of incredible writers who spend an awful lot of time sort of uh, reading up on what's going on in the real world and you know letting that sort of seep into what we do fiction wise um, it's just great it's just an amazing place to be when you watch the I'm guessing when you watch a show are there times where you watch your own speeches and say damn I'm good uh, no <laughs> <laughs> you should there's uh, I'm going to play just a snippet of the I'm a man you're a boy speech he gave to your pal Tony Goldwyn who was on the show Tony right. yeah who I feel way, like I've heard this speech before in my personal life <laughs> I'm a man, you're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Something you your dad told you, is it? <laughs> a boy. I'm a man. I have worked for every single thing I have ever received. I have fought and scraped and bled for every inch of ground I walk on. I was the first in my family to go to college. My daughter went to boarding school with the children of kings. I made that happen. You cried yourself to sleep because daddy hurt your feelings, because papa banged his secretary, because it hurt to have so much money, you spoiled, entitled, ungrateful little brat. You have oh. everything handed to you on a silver platter and you squander it. You're given the world and you can appreciate it because you haven't had to work for anything. By the way, of all your speeches, that's the most badass. <laughs> that is the most badass speech. Do you remember any of the any of those lines? I was looking to see if you uh, mouthed it a little bit. <laughs> no, no, it's been too long. But I mean, the, the the beauty of that speech is just even in the image, you have a black man who's been stripped down to his underwear and chained to a chair, yeah. telling a white Southern Republican president that he's a boy. It's kind of just just in terms of the balance of of even what we're seeing today. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting, unbelievable um, image. What goes to your mind when you when you hear that stuff when you when you hear back at your performance? When I was just listening to it just now, I just kept thinking on some level it is about the struggle of of what goes on in America in terms of those who have and those who do not have. Yeah, um, that there is always that sense of you know if someone comes up out out of from the bottom and then looks at somebody who's already always had it, you kind of think I'm actually worked harder to get where I am, and uh, in terms of what in, in terms of the opposite, it's so much more satisfying when you when you work for it. It's yes, if it's just sort of handed to you and just given to you, I think it actually, um, as uh, turns out in his case, it turns out to be a trap. That power turns out to be something that you're trapped in as opposed to something that you should be able to relish and enjoy and use with a certain amount of sophistication. Whereas with uh, Rowan, he understands exactly what power is and and doesn't feel at this moment, in, in, that, in that moment in time, doesn't feel trapped by it. Yeah, you know, watching the show, 
uh, a diehard watcher of this show. My wife and I have been watching since day one. I remember not watching season one, then binging, and then you know, once you start binging a show you like, then you're then you're on board. <laughs> I'm still con- I'm not convinced whether or not I feel like Rowan is good or bad because I, I feel like everyone has a side of good and bad in the show. Where is that? Is that is that by design? I'm imagining. Like I, I think it is. I mean, I think that that's the beauty of that character is that there are moments where you absolutely loathe what he's doing, and then yeah. there are moments where you think, oh my god, he's sort of he's he's a real human being, especially when it comes to his daughter you know that's yeah. that's sort of i mean he will do anything and everything to make sure that she's protected but he'll do exactly the same thing for the country well you were quoted saying uh you know what's interesting about his his character of playing a villain or quote-unquote villain is that he's not trying to do evil your character actually thinks he's he's doing something to make the world a better place or something like that i believe that's true i think that you can't from an acting point of view you can never play a negative right, right. so that if you're playing a villain quote unquote then i think you have to figure out what that character thinks is doing he's doing either for his world or the world in general and i think most people who are villains really do believe that they're doing something good for the world or certainly good for their world you know if you're one of those guys who's a serial killer obviously by taking all these people out you think you're making the world a better right, place right yeah. so that's that's why uh, it comes across that way, Rich. He's he's a great actor. Season six of Scandal. Joe Morton here on the show. Now his uh, his daughter on the show. Yeah, Kerry Washington. Oh, she yeah. is gorgeous in person. As what we was imagine. that commercial? I, you saw we've yesterday? never we've never was met it, her. Oh, they were behind on the, on the TV screen behind you. There was like a makeup or shampoo. Oh, commercial. Neutrogena. She's Neutrogena. doing. Oh, yeah. And, and right, I, I looked at right. her. I said, wow. Is there a more oh, gorgeous no, she woman? She is gorgeous. Like, she absolutely she absolutely is. She absolutely is. I mean, I've I've had the fortune of working with two actresses. She being one of them, and the other being Jennifer Beals, who's just just both of them are just absolutely exquisite do you get used to that or do you always in the back of your mind look at her face and be like she's so beautiful <laughs> like do you just honestly just start, you know ease up do- my friend she <laughs> she is my daughter on oh, the yeah. show <laughs> i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, can you tell us about the the mindset of of or just what it's like being on the set of a scandal because you know here you are we're palling around here in the studio but when you have to get ready for an intense scene like that, is the game face on automatically, or is that something you snap into? No, I mean, I come to work, uh, especially with scenes like that, I come to work fully prepared for what that day is going to be. Right. So once I arrive on the set, that's kind of where I'm at. That's, the vibe is already kind of set, it's in a there. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's no there's no goofing around on the set. Not. I mean, it's interesting, because people ask me this question all the time, so what do you do to get prepared for all this kind of thing? And, and, and a lot of my things are with Carrie, and we never talk about the scene before. Beforehand. We never talk about it while we're doing it either, unless something comes up where there's uh, some sort of question about something. But pr- primarily what we do is we arrive on set, we sort of just jump into it, uh, and then we don't really talk about how much fun we had until after it's over. And then you have a little fist bump and but, hey, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. uh, well, the, the, the joke between she and I is that her parents always wonder, because we always say how much fun we have together doing these scenes, and they don't get it, because they're, they're always so, you know, as you say, so much tension involved. Yeah. Um, but it is fun. It's just a, it's just a real joy. I gotta say too, Joe Morton uh, from Scandal smells uh, smells very good, and, I have to ask you. <laughs> yeah, and, no, and he's a stylish guy, like a jacket. Yeah. yeah, but you came in as like a waffle. Like, it probably smelled like sausage uh, uh, ba- uh, burritos before you came in. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you came in and it smells good. What are, what are you rocking? Uh, it's Kiehl's Musk. Is that expensive? Uh, <laughs> top I of the suppose. line. Top of the, top of the line. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joe, you uh, you went to Hofstra University. I did. Which is on. Uh, I grew up on Long Island. Okay. He's a Jersey guy. Wayne Corbett. We, we live. Yeah, Wayne. Corbett, Hofstra Wayne University. Um, you started doing the stage stuff. We, I feel like a lot of times we, when we see people that started doing stage acting first, they they seem to have a more natural knack for television. Because is that the best training to be to to be a stage actor first? I think so. I mean, I think for, uh, whenever I talk to young actors, what I always tell them, they always say, "Well, what what should I do?" And I say, "Do the stage." I mean, if you can do theater, you can do anything. If you can keep a character fresh for let's say three months, doing eight shows a week, if you can keep that character fresh and alive and and new to the, his and, and present for every performance, then you can do anything at that point. Um, so that and the other idea is that in a the theater, um, you know, you have to fill the house you know what you do has to go from the stage or to the back of the house um in television and film it's all the same work just smaller and it's easier to make Mm -hmm. something smaller than it is to make something larger so it's easier to go from theater to film and tv than the other way around yeah we always say when uh when you go see a show I always get I always get super emotional during the curtain call because I'm like they put in so much hard work. Yeah, that's, that is. That's I the mean, best when you part. do a show day in and day out, multiple shows, at the end of each performance, is there that sense of like we did it again? Like that curtain call, I feel is such a special moment of live 
theater. Well, because all the way through the course of that particular show, one hopes you've been feeling things from the audience all the way through. This past summer, I did a play called Turn Me Loose about Dick Gregory uh, off Broadway. And what was great about it is feeling the audience all the way through. In that particular show, I spent an awful lot of time actually talking straight to the audience, either doing stand-up the way he used to do stand-up, or simply just talking to them the way he would go to universities and talk to them. Because you have a commanding voice. I could see you doing that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is that something you practice? Or something you're just born with? Uh, a little of both, probably. Um, probably given the gift of having a, a, a good voice and then given the training of knowing how to use it. You good singer? I do sing, yes. What kind of music? Well, that's how I started, by doing musicals. What, what kind of uh, uh, music? Now I do, do mostly blues. Yeah? yeah? Do you play instruments? I play guitar. You do? I do. Oh, man, this guy, I hate him. <laughs> I hate you. Super yeah. talent. He's super dead. He's acting on stage. You can sing, play guitar. Is that what you do for fun a lot of times? Relaxing? Uh, that's what I've been doing recently uh, a lot because uh, my buddies and I are talking about going into the studio. So I've been oh, no doing a lot of writing of songs and so forth. So what's the best thrill? Uh, stage, TV, movies, performing live, guitar, stuff like that? What stage, you, well, it's always performing live, yeah. guitar, and doing the stage, it's kind of yeah, the same yeah, thing. Okay. And so, um, but I think doing theater is probably far more challenging and far more involving. There's no stake, There's no take two. Right, right, right. Yeah, you have to so make that it happen. once you start, you just if something goes wrong, you just have to figure it out and work your way out. Isn't that a weird phenomenon though? When you think about it, Rich and I, you know, we did live television and we do a live radio show. There's something about live where you can't mess up, so you sort of come through. But when you know in the back of your mind you could do it again, a lot of times you mess up. It's a, yeah, it is a weird. Well, it's different. I mean, I think for television and, and film, it's not that you have it in the back of your mind, I can make a mistake. Right. I think what, what because you know you're going to do it again anyway, right? They're going to shoot it from several different um, of course. angles, several, right. t- several different sizes. So you know you're going to be doing it over and over again. So the idea, supposedly, is that you get better and better and better as the day goes on. Also, that you know that as, uh, in most cases, a director will go from a wide shot to a close-up. So as you get to the close-up, obviously, the more emotional things should get. Does gotcha. it does it ever cross your mind because you've been doing this for so long? You know how you look in that scene. Do you get caught up in that superficial no. sort of thing ever? No. <laughs> you, don't care. No. you don't care. Like when you look back, you're like, oh, look at me. I got a. I don't like that shot of my face. It doesn't ever bother. No, I mean, I think if you get involved with sort of what I look like, then you're not you're, you're not, not in, in the it. scene anymore. You know, okay. you're suddenly someplace See? else. You're in front of the mirror yeah. somewhere. Well, the, like that. Joe Morton, uh, who plays Rowan on Scandal, I. I feel like the show does a great job. Emmy Award winner, by the way. Emmy Award yeah. winner, Joe Morton. When you when you see the show touching on issues that are going on now in society, do you feel like that's an important thing you guys do? I feel like it is. I feel like I feel like the show has tackled a few big issues. And will you think the show will continue to do that? I feel like it sort of replicates what's going on in real life in a way. I don't think that there's any any deliberate um, mm-hmm. sort of idea of trying to parallel what's going on in the real world with our show. I think that mm-hmm. basically what Shonda wants to do is use the show as kind of a large metaphor, mm-hmm. um, so that you, even before when I talked about being trapped in power, um, so if you look at the presidency that way, if you think about the presidency being something that, yes, you, it's kind of like when you audition yeah. for a job, uh, I've auditioned for a job and suddenly got it and think, oh my God, now that I have this job, what do I do? do and now i have to actually do it mm-hmm. so i think there's a lot of that kind of paralleling in terms of what it means to be human and being american and what american democracy actually is but i don't think there's any purposeful um mm-hmm. uh, or deliberate sort of we're going to parallel what's going on in the real gotcha. world because on the show when they're doing the new presidential race because you know they had they, oh, what was the character's name he's almost like the donald trump of it in a way but he didn't oh. make it very far uh, um gigantor uh, no <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I remember what character I can't can't think yeah, of his name offhand. But yes, yeah, the, like, the Southern oil guy. Yeah, but, but apparently that was someone that um, Shonda had thought about long before um, Trump was in the running. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the shows that you've been watching recently, uh, those were we all shot like last summer, so yeah. it was way before the election even happened. There was there wasn't there the the one where the the young black kid got shot. Yes. And that's yeah. So there, there, there was uh, that was yes. That was, there was uh, clearly talking about what was going on in the country in terms of um, white policemen shooting um, uh, unarmed black men. Yes. When you when you look at uh, the, the characters on the show, it, it, since you don't have scenes with many of them, do you know most most of the people on the show like on a, on a friendly personal level? Or do we you... all do? Yeah. Okay. We all, I mean, we all hang out as much as we can. Obviously, mm-hmm. everybody has a schedule, so it's right. not an easy thing to do. Um, but yes, we all get along, and we all sort of hang out when the opportunity avails itself. I was going to say like uh, like Guillermo Diaz. Oh, he's yeah, great. He's I mean, great. What yeah. a great actor. Have you ever yeah, seen him? In, have you ever seen him in Half Baked? 
I have not. No, <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's him I mean, and Chappelle. Just, and just, okay, just it's to, so good. Just to see him on that show, and then Weeds, and now Skid. Like that guy's enough. You got a lot of great actors on and the show, all th- and they're all theater actors uh, as well. So we all speak the same language. It sort of all helps with the scripts and so forth. Earlier this week, um, we were talking about. Keanu Reeves because John Wick 2 is coming out and that's how the whole speed thing came up and you know you're involved in that we right. mentioned that other dude we talked about uh, Carlos Carrasco did you get to work with Keanu because we were saying this guy's so underrated cool did you work with him well we worked this, on speed yeah, not, yeah, yeah but so you yeah you guys were in scenes together right yeah yes. you were what, yeah. what's he like in real life what was your impression He's great. I mean, he's a great kid. Um, kid, because well, he's much younger than I am. Right. Um, he's also really generous. I remember because I think I had a birthday during the, that shooting. And he sort of uh, came into my trailer or wherever we were with a Happy bottle birthday, of, of Chris, well, with a Cristal, and yeah. he sort wow. of sat around and uh, sipped out of the bottle. And so he's a, he's a very generous guy. He's a guy also who loves Shakespeare. Um, he's one of the few actors I know who has memorized lines from all thirty six plays in the canon. So he's like the greatest. This guy. Cause we started talking about him yesterday. Shooting guns. Riding motorcycles, Shakespeare, yeah, and we said we got to get him on. And since uh, since you you know, yeah, him, I mean, I think and the Matrix, I think, sort of brought a lot out. You know, right, he yeah. got a chance to really see what he could do. And and that brings me back to the other question: when you when you work with these guys and you build relationships, um, Guillermo Diaz and 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 Keanu Reeves and all these other people, are you interested in their projects because you know them? Or are you less interested because you know them? No. As a matter of fact, I guess it was a couple of years ago, Keanu did some small movie that I found out about and ended up going to the premiere because I knew he'd be there and so I could get a chance to see him and see oh. the movie and had a couple of other friends who were in it. So, no, I think you become sort of, you know, you kind of feel a connection there. So you think, oh, such and such is doing so, you know, someone so is doing such and such. Let me go check it out. Well, what's it like, uh, you know, memorizing the lines? Is it something you do in private or something you bounce it off of? with someone else i do it in private um uh it's because it's for me it's not about memorizing lines by rote i mean basically what you're what you're meant to do is understand uh, the emotion of what the character is doing what that character wants and so the more you understand what's going on the easier the words come right so that as i'm doing a particular scene or if it's a monologue yeah um the words come because i know what it is i'm talking about it's right, right, just right, knowing right. the words yeah the golden age of television, we talk about that, like how right sure. now there's so many good shows. What else is Joe Morton watching? Because, you know, for every for every scandal, I can, I can name like five, you know, at least five other shows that are on the radar. Is there something that you've enjoyed in the last year or so? I don't watch a lot of television, oddly enough, and if my TV goes on, usually it's news, um, and if it's which not is, news... Which is depressing sometimes. It's probably, I, in some ways, far and... more entertaining than anything <laughs> yeah, you could find true. on television, <laughs> yeah. because it's real, yeah, it's because, real. You, because you know it's going to affect your, your life. So I spend an awful lot of time watching the news, and if it's not news, it's it's movies. Hey, Joe, let me ask you about that for a second. You said the news. in, in the On a set, right? Let's say you're on a set. Is it frowned upon to talk politics? Because I feel like it's so unavoidable to talk about what's going on with, with everything from between Hillary and Trump to now that he what he's doing as president. If you're on set, do you say, let's avoid that so that we're all getting along? Or is everyone sort of on the same page so you, you talk about it? Well, I mean, it depends. I think you have to be careful because you don't want to say something to someone who's a colleague or yeah. who yeah. is part of the crew um, who may have voted for Trump. And I, you know, yeah. I, I did not vote for Trump. Um, so you don't want to insult anyone. But at the same time, I think we do have conversations trying to be as clear and honest about how we feel about certain things mm-hmm. as as we can. Uh, we were talking about OJ before we came in, and I remember when that happened. <clears throat> I was here in LA shooting a film, and that was all over the set. I mean, in terms of people talking about. About what was going on. So I think there are those moments in our political lives where you can't avoid not, uh, talking about it. Without a doubt. Now, Joe, uh, I'm telling you when, you, when you watch this show, where does it go from? I mean, you can't really tell me where it goes from here, but we just saw, I mean, I did, can I even tell, we saw someone, uh, you know, some, a major character of storyline change, someone got killed. So I, are we finding that out in the next couple episodes, What, what what's going to happen here? Because Fitz has a major decision that's that's his, right? Yes. Uh, according to the way the Constitution works, if this were to happen in real life, yeah. if, if a president-elect was assassinated, um, then how do you decide who the next president is? And obviously... Could it be the guy running for vice president on that same ticket? Could be. Could be the other person running for president. Could be, although they didn't get the vote. Yeah. So that's where we are. Uh, and will I tell you what's happening next? Absolutely not. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Gotta watch. Joe, honestly, a, a pleasure having you here. Really, it's been fun. It really is. Uh, January 19th, you know, it's it's already premiered again. The new season of Scandal. As, as good as ever on ABC. Yep. It's, it's it definitely a Thursday night appointment watch. It's one of those that you gotta watch it. Uh, Scandal, Joe Morton, thanks for being here, man. My Joe. pleasure. Thank Thank you for inviting me. Thank you.